Today we will see how SprySmart easily fixes two of the most common problems in a sprinkler system at the same time. This yard suffers from two problems. There are 20 heads on a single station. That makes the pressure too low and the sprinklers don't spray correctly. Also, this area is too wet, while this one is too dry. This lawn actually has three wet areas and two dry areas. We will fix all these problems and save water just by installing SprySmart valves and making some minor adjustments. But first, we need to make sure SprySmart will work with our system. First, we check the pressure of the main supply. We do this with a pressure gauge we bought at a hardware store. Screw the gauge onto the hose bib and open the valve. The system pressure should be at least 60 PSI. Much less and we'll have no hope of having enough pressure at the sprinkler heads. If you find low pressure here, fix it by adjusting your regulator or well pump control. Next, we'll check the pressure at a sprinkler head. While you're at the hardware store, buy a half inch to quarter inch adapter. Remove the pressure gauge from the hose adapter and screw in your half inch adapter. Don't worry about sealing it, it won't make any difference. If the sprinklers are on a slope, pick a sprinkler head that is about halfway up the slope. We need to clear the grass and dirt from around a spray head. Note that the same procedure will be used to install the spray smart valves. First, lay some plastic next to the sprinkler head to keep the grass clean. Next, dig a wedge of grass around the sprinkler. By digging below the grass roots at an angle, we'll be able to remove and replace the grass without killing it. Lift the wedge in one piece. Remove all the dirt from around the bottom of the sprinkler head. Unscrew the sprinkler head and attach the gauge. If there's water in the pipe, make the switch quickly to avoid making a mud puddle. Turn on the water. If the gauge reads 20 PSI or more, we can be sure that the spray smart valves will close properly. If the pressure is below 20, we will need to make sure that as we change the system, we reduce the flow enough to raise the pressure to 20. We'll do this by reducing the number of heads, switching to low flow heads, or adjusting each head to use less flow. Next, stand on the lowest sprinkler in the zone. Look towards the highest sprinkler in the zone. If you need to look up to the highest sprinkler, then the pressure difference may not allow the spray smart valves to reset properly. A zone that has over seven feet of rise and check valves installed in the heads will need to switch to external check valves. Refer to the written instructions for use with check valves. Most systems will have a rise of less than seven feet and will not be an issue. Now we're ready to plan our spray smart system changes. First, we want to mark every sprinkler while the system is running. It's very important to mark every sprinkler because once they pop down, they can be hard to find and you might miss one. In this case, we're marking the dry areas with yellow flags and the wet areas with green flags. Now, with the sprinklers off, look at the different areas and make sure you like how the heads are marked. Make sure all the dry areas are marked with yellow flags. This will be our A zone. Now this is important. When a sprinkler sprays on both a dry and wet area, mark it as dry or A. Since we will run the wet areas less time, we need to make sure that any sprinkler that sprays on the dry area runs with the dry areas. Change the flags if you see any sprinklers that are marked incorrectly. In our case, yellow means dry and green means wet. We also added some red flags to show which heads we will shut off. Count how many A valves you will need by counting the yellow flags. Count how many B valves you will need by counting the green flags. Count twice and write it down. It's super easy to count wrong when there are flags all over the place. Next, we will preset our spray smart valves to be A valves or B valves. Setting the A valves is easy. There's nothing to do. All spray smart valves come from the factory in the A or ready to open state. You can check this by pushing lightly on the rubber plunger. If the plunger stays bulged out, the valve is in the A, ready to open state. 
This one is ready. Here's how we change an A valve to a B or ready to close valve. Push the plunger down firmly all the way until it stops. Release the plunger and wait one minute for the valve to reset. Now when you press the plunger lightly, it moves into the housing. With very light pressure, the plunger is barely sticking out. It is really noticeable when you compare it to an A valve. This valve is ready to close or in the B state. Do this for each of the valves that will be installed in the B zone. Place an A valve next to each of the yellow flags and place a B valve next to each of your green flags. Finally, go around one last time and lightly press on each plunger to make sure they're all set right. We want to make sure we get them preset correctly so we don't have to redo it later. If you find one that's in the wrong state, just press the plunger firmly until it stops and let go. It'll be in the correct state in less than a minute. Now we're ready to install the valves under the heads. Let's review the tools we need. Plastic to protect the lawn. A shovel to dig a large wedge of grass and dirt around the sprinkler. A hand spade to help clear all the remaining dirt. A riser removal tool and pliers to help remove the old riser adapters. Some new adapters and a cutoff saw to make them the perfect length. Oh, and some plastic tubing for the best part. So here we are back at our lowest sprinkler. We're going to use the tubing to drain the water from the system. It's important to drain the water so you don't get a muddy mess while you're trying to install the Spray Smart valves. If you drain the lowest sprinkler, you only have to do it once. So here's how you do it. Start by removing all the dirt around the sprinkler, all the way down to the supply pipe. You don't want to drop any dirt in the supply pipe. Then unscrew just the top of the spray head. Insert the plastic tube into the spray head and suck out the water. Drain the water into the grass away from where you're digging. If the water level doesn't seem to drop, don't be discouraged. Just keep sucking and eventually it will dry up. Next, remove just the spray head from the adapter plumbing. This will allow you to dip your hose all the way into the main pipe. Drain the main pipe as much as you can. Now we're ready to install our first Spray Smart valve. If there was more than one adapter attaching the sprinkler head to the main pipe, assemble them together so you can see the length you need. Now make an assembly that includes the Spray Smart valve. Start by screwing the Spray Smart valve to the sprinkler so the rubber plunger is still showing. Screw it in tightly. Don't push the plunger or you might reset the valve to the opposite state. Now use standard riser adapters to make an assembly that will extend the Spray Smart valve to match the original length. Note that if your sprinkler was above or below the ground level before, you can add or subtract a little length to put it where you want it. Before we screw the riser adapter to the Spray Smart valve, we need to install the screen. Push the screen into the adapter all the way to the bottom of the threads. You want the screen to be installed in the thread just below the Spray Smart valve. If the Spray Smart valve is the only adapter you will use, then push the screen into the threads on the main pipe. Now finish screwing the assembly together. Screw the completed assembly into the main supply pipe. Try to get the sprinkler to aim in the right direction without over tightening. You can adjust it later. Repeat this process for each sprinkler. Always work one sprinkler at a time and work next to the hole so you don't mix them up. A special note about spray heads with no body. When the stem falls into the adapter, it must not touch the Spray Smart valve. This typically requires an adapter that's at least three inches long above the Spray Smart valve. With all the Spray Smart valves installed, we're ready for our first test. Don't put the dirt back yet. Set your irrigation controller to manually run the station for about three minutes. This will give you enough time to make sure all of your A zone heads are on and all of your B zone heads are off. If most heads are doing what they should and one or two are wrong, you probably had a valve preset incorrectly. It happens. Turn the system off and wait one minute for the valves to reset. After you've waited a minute, you can reset the head that was wrong. 
have a long adapter ready to keep the water from draining into your hole. Unscrew the spray smart valve from the adapter and quickly install the long adapter. Now, push the plunger once firmly until it stops and reinstall the head. With spray smart valves, timing is very important. Never do anything for less than a minute. Never run the station for less than a minute. Never restart the station without waiting at least a minute. That gives the spray smart valves time to reset properly. A quick restart or start stop may cause the valves to get out of sequence. If none of the heads are shutting off, you don't have enough system pressure to operate the valves properly. Try turning down the adjuster screw on all the heads until the B valves start to shut. As soon as one shuts, they all should shut since the pressure will go up. Most likely, with some of the heads shut off, you'll need to adjust the heads to reduce the spray distance anyway and we'll never have a problem again. If there's still not enough pressure, you may have to switch to lower flow heads. Once the A cycle test has completed, wait for at least a minute before testing the B cycle. Like before, set your irrigation controller to manually run the station for about three minutes. This will give you enough time to make sure all of your B zone heads are on and all of your A zone heads are off. Once you're happy with the A and B zone setting of the spray smart valves, it's time to replace the dirt and grass around the sprinkler heads. We want to do this as soon as possible to avoid making mud in the holes. We can worry about fine tuning the spray direction and distance after we get the holes filled in. Start by filling the loose dirt around the pipe. Make sure you pack it as you go so you don't end up with extra and settling later. Once you have all the dirt back in the hole, replace the grass wedge and stomp on it to pack it tightly. Tight packing will help keep it from drying out at the seams. The last thing to do is reprogram your irrigation controller to run the station twice. You'll do this by using the A cycle and B cycle on the controller. There are many different types of controllers. Be sure to check your manufacturer's instructions for your controller. Remember to always observe the one minute rule and you should enjoy years of maintenance free water savings and improved landscape health by splitting your irrigation zone using spray smart valves.